Hi everyone, welcome to the video. My name's Colin, call sign MM0OPX if you've not seen me before. And in this video, we're going to be taking a quick look at this contraption. This is what we're going to be looking at. So, it's quite simply, it's an antenna feed point. Um, I've designed it to be used for um, vertical, uh, my vertical antennas, but I suppose you could use it for a lot of different purposes. Now, I'm not aware of anything like this on the market. Um, it's quite simple, uh, similar. Um, to the, uh, the adjustable antenna, antenna that I use. So I've kind of used some of the same materials and same te techniques to build it, um, but it's really, really incredibly simple and I just wanted to give a, an overview. So if you wanted to build something like this yourself, you know, there's no reason why you can't do it. Um, now I, I've used really good quality components as I do of, on all my um, antennas. Um, I don't think there's any point in scrimping um, and I'll, I'll actually go through those um, so it might look a bit funny to you, um, but let's let's take it apart first. Now these enclosures, I've had these before years ago. These are an IP54 enclosure. Um, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Kima Kima Cure, Kima Cure. I'm not quite sure, um, but it's an absolutely solid box. Um, so quite simply, you can see the secrets in here. Well, there's nothing to it, really. Um, so we've got this SO239, then we've got a ground connection, and then we've got the center conductor. We've got a connector to these, these two connections on the side. And I was going to only put one on, but I thought, why not put two on? Because if I ever wanted to run a fan vertical, I could do that. Okay, I would need to separate the wires uh, at the top of the pole or towards the top of the pole. But I thought I'll put it on and, and uh, all I'll ever need to do is, is use one. Or, um, so obviously the, um, the SO239 that I'm using, these are really top quality. I get these from a, from a seller actually on eBay here in the UK. He imports them. Um, so these are gold plated contacts. The dielectric is PTFE, so you won't melt these. Um, these are just fantastic. They're not cheap. They're about delivered um, on his eBay store. They're about four pounds, four fifty, something like that. But they really, are, really are good. You, you don't want to scrimp. Um, for the ground connection, I'm using these. This is a swing bolt. You get these actually. You get these from eBay again, and these are about. I don't know what they are. About three pounds, something like that. Um, Two fifty, three pounds. They're stainless steel. These are excellent. So this is what this is what I use in here, and also what I use on my adjusty waves. So a really, really handy tool to have in your arsenal. Again, you could have just used a bolt through and that would have been absolutely fine. Um, all the other connections are stainless steel. Um, I've put two of these um, RSB clamps on here. So this is if I ever wanted to uh, linear load the antenna. So what I can actually do and I can actually put one of my 8mm poles in here so you can see the swivel on that end so what you would do is you would run your element from here you would run it up to um, the top of the pole um, and back down again through here uh, and then just hook it on to here onto these bolts here um, so that's for that, just for tensioning, tensioning it up so I probably will do that for 40 metres um, now I'm actually using these for phase verticals. If I was just going out with a vertical, I would just simply use an adjusty wave because I can adjust it to any length I want. It, it allows for any ground conditions by simply lengthening or shortening um, the element. Um, but if I'm only going to be using one fixed band, then I think these are a good shout um, and they're a bit cheaper. Um, now, on the lid, you can see that I have a clamp and I'll just take this off to show you. Now I've configured these so I could use them on different poles. So how it's configured just now, it will fit onto my Life's a Breeze Pro poles. So these clamps, they all come um, with a standard fitting. They go up in classes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Um, and they go from kind of six millimeter up to sixty something millimeter, I believe the range is. So this one's actually a thirty-eight. 
Um, again, this is made by RSB. You can buy these in um, hydraulic suppliers. That's that's typically where I buy them. Um, they're not cheap. Again, these are probably for a pair of these or one set. You're probably four pound, five pound for the smaller set. The bigger ones are a bit more expensive. They can be seven or eight pound, um, but I still think it's well worth it. So again, so you can see what I've done here is I've drilled a number of holes. So I've got a common hole. So this this covers. Um, um, so this is class 4, this is class 5, and this is class 6. So if I want to change what pole I'm going to be clamping to, all I do is unscrew this, I remove these grommets, because they're just to stop the water getting in, and I just move the grommet over and move the bolt over. Um, but I don't need to do that very often. But I have the smaller clamps here, so these are for my little 5 meter um, wind jammer poles. 30 mil clamps. And these are... Um, these are actually 44 and a half, so these would actually fit, I think they fit something like the um, DX Commander pole, classic pole. But I do have bigger ones, I don't have them here, but it's these actually. These are 52mm clamps, these are what goes on the, the spider beam. So that if you want to fit your spider beam, that's 52mm clamps that you need. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's, quite a, it's quite a simple thing, um, but I'm quite pleased with how it's actually turned out. It really is heavy duty, and you know, it's absolutely solid. If you wanted to, you could actually put a, you know, a one to one choke uh, ballon in here if you really wanted to. Um, you know, I was running this last week, two of these, um, and I was running a bit of power, and I had absolutely no issues at all. So, um, um, it's not always necessary, but you could always put a choke onto here quite easily. Uh, maybe a, a GM3 SEK, um, that's what I've got a couple of those, and you know, I could use that. So you don't always have to put a choke in here, and I've not bothered with this. Um, the wire that I've used in here, this is actually house wire. Um, when I actually wired the electric here in the garage, and I had loads of this left over, so I just used this. And it's quite quite thick stuff, so I'm not quite sure how thick it is, but it's maybe 12 gauge, something like that. So again, this is going to handle a lot of power um, if you wanted to. So again, really wanted to just kind of inspire. If you wanted to do something like this, I'm not aware of anything like this on the market. Um, so I th again, I thought I'd make my own. Um, so what we'll do is put the lid back on it. So again, it's as simple as that. And so, so you wouldn't normally, as I say, you wouldn't normally be changing these, but I, it does give me the flexibility for whatever pole that I want to be using. Um, typically, the only poles I will really be using would be the six meter Life's Debris Pro pole and the 12 meter Spider Beam pole. So the six meter pole would be for um, 40 meters and uh, up because you can linear load quite easily, 40 meters, and you're not losing a lot of efficiency. So there's not really any point in using the big pole. But if I want to use 80 meters, uh, in that case, I would have the 52 mil clamps and that would let me use the, the 12 meter spider beam pole and then I would have 80 meters uh, linear loaded. So that's just a little quick rundown of this um, of this vertical feed point as I'll, as I'll call it. Um, and hopefully it's giving you some ideas uh, if you want to make your own. Um, I'll maybe, if I can get some links, I might put a couple of links in the description to some of the components, um, but I'm, you'll find them. Um, a lot of antennas actually use these clamps. You'll have seen these these green clamps. I've seen them on uh, various VHF Yagis. Um, I think they're, they, they come from Germany, but I could be wrong. But again, RSB is the brand. I think Parker also make these, and they're all um, standard sizes and standard fitments. So you can you just look up their um, you just look up their uh, the technical data sheet, and it'll tell you the uh, the distance to the holes, and you could mark them on. You could mark them on here, um, you know, and drill your hole positions. That's that's what I do, um, and it certainly worked for me. So before I forget, so just regarding the um, the radials. So if you have this as a elevated, you could you could just have tuned radials, and um, you could perhaps just have five five wires connected to here. But what I tend to do is I tend to use a radial plate. This is a homebrew radial plate. I bought this plate from eBay. Not quite sure how thick it is. I'm just looking for my um, 
six inch rail, but never mind. But I think it's um, four millimeter thick, something of that um, size. And then I, I actually made up a template, drilled all these holes, um, and put all these stainless steel fixings in. So what I do is I've got a little tail. Um, so I just connect onto um, onto here, and I just screw it onto onto the plate, and then I just get my radial wires, and I just connect them round about here, and it uh, it works a treat. And again, I've got two of these. You've probably seen these uh, in the other videos as well. So that's how I connect up the. Um, that's how I connect up the radials. Thanks again. If you've stayed this long into the video, it's much appreciated. I hope uh, hope that was of some use to you. Um, if you like my stuff, please give me the thumbs up. Or if you don't like it, give me the thumbs down. Uh, that's all good. Um, and if you uh, could hit that subscribe button, that would also be great. Um, I'm starting to see a few more subscribers on the channel, and it's really given me the uh, boost to try and make um, a few more regular videos. So I'm trying to get one done uh, at least once a week now. So until the next video, once again, See you next time.